Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about prolonged fasting for heart disease. And a reference I'd give you was Joel Furman's book called Fasting for Eating and Health. Heart disease. I'm a prior emergency physician and I have been through this drill hundreds of times. Somebody comes to the ER with chest pain, we frantically scramble to do an EKG, it's abnormal, we call the cardiologist, the team comes in, the patient has a catheterization and they whisk into surgery. You hear later that they had four vessel bypass surgery or some kind of feedback like that, but I never see the long-term outcome. What I have seen, and this is my own experience and among my own friends, people who've had that surgery and come out not the same, not the same intellectual capacity. What are the risks I've told a patient most of my career? I say, well, there's about a 1% to 2% chance of you, being, of you being killed by the surgery or dying from the complications of it because people are critically ill. But nobody talks about the 9 to 10% chance of having cognitive decline. And what happens? You spend five to six days critically ill. You're in the intensive care unit. Your chest is broken open. You don't eat for those four or five days. You get a bill for a quarter million dollars. You have four bypass surgery. Your insurance pays most of it, or maybe not. Um, what would happen if there's an alternative? What would you consider if you had a different alternative? Is there another way of reversing that surgery? And I think there may be, and this is terribly intriguing. That method is prolonged fasting. The reason I write this letter is I've just had a recent email from somebody who had had recent open heart surgery and without my knowledge had simply heard about my prolonged fasting from a prior email a couple of weeks back and wrote to inform me that he'd undertaken a 10-day water only fast and in that time he had gone from having chest pain and only been able to walk uh, 80 at a speed that would give him a heart rate of 85 or so before he became short of breath to being up to 130, now having no chest pain, no shortness of breath, and all he did was have water for 10 days. Now, I might have supervised that a little more closely, but what do you think might be happening? What we do know is when folks, we do know you can reverse coronary artery disease by diet. We know the Ornish plan or the Pritikin diet on just pure vegetables can completely reverse uh, coronary artery disease. Esselstyn has elegantly proven that with a very low fat, very low um, and pure vegan diet. He has shown that on catheterization people's arteries get completely better. But do we have studies on humans actually doing prolonged fasting? What we do have are anecdotes from lots of places and some interesting observations. Uh, the observations are things like in about a day or two you're completely changed over your fuel source of glucose to ketones. And about day 7, 8, 9, or 10, you start increasing the cholesterol in your blood uh, dramatically. What does that all mean? This is my conjecture, and I'm waiting for, for bigger studies to come out. It is clear that you can only store 1,500 calories of carbohydrates, we call that glycogen, in your muscle and liver. And in just 12 hours, you're starting to switch over to burning a little bit of fat as ketones show up in your blood. Now, I've been doing a fast-mimicking diet for 18 months now, and every month I do it for five days. On day two, 36 hours in, my ketones will hit two. By day three, if I'm being conscientious, I'll hit three virtually every month. What that means is um, I'm now at fully ketosis. But on day one, after 12 hours, I'll be 0.7 and 1.1 in the morning and afternoon, which means I'm starting to show some ketones. But by the time I get to three at 48 hours, I don't feel hungry, and I'm running only on fat. Now, that means my body is searching around for fatty sources. Well, the first fat is the simple fat that's available to you easily, and that's probably what's in your liver. That's probably what's giving us fatty liver in the majority of Americans. But the second fat that's available is the fat that's in your arteries. It's just pools of it sitting right there, those cholesterol plaques. That's why your cholesterol may well go up. That's Joel Furman's conjecture. 
But in any case, if it goes up, you're going to start feeling better in 10 days. And that's what he has observed and what I've now observed in a cardinal case. What will work for me? I am totally fascinated with this. My conjecture is when you have open heart surgery, you don't eat for seven to eight to 10 days. Hmm. And you have a bill for a quarter million dollars and you have 10% less brain cells. What would happen if you skipped the quarter million dollar bill and hung on to that extra 10% brain cell and just simply said, let's just not eat either way? Do you get a better outcome the second way? How come nobody's telling you about that? Maybe we need to talk about this more. Maybe we need better studies. I think it's time to pay intense interest in this. What am I doing in my practice? I'm designing and putting together a very clear protocol to teach people how to do prolonged 10-day fasting. It starts by teaching them how to do short-term fast mimicking, and I would refer them to Fast Mimicking Diet uh, by Walter Longo for starters. Looking forward to talking to you more about this. I suspect we're going to find something very interesting. This is Dr. John Whitcomb for News and Nutrition on prolonged fasting to help you live longer.